We all know Spike Lee. But you probably know him as the visionary writer-director behind many iconic movies, such as Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X, and most recently, 2018's Black Klansman, which Spike finally won that Academy Award for. Let's do the right thing! With his unmistakable double dolly shots, vibrant visual style, and creative applications of rhythm and music within his films, it is clear when you're experiencing a Spike Lee joint. However, it's often Spike's insane ability to provoke conversation and inspire social emancipation through his work that is considered the most fundamental characteristic of his filmography. From black-on-black -black gun violence in Chirac, female African-American sexuality in She's Gotta Have It, to even the police brutality of white America in Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee's unwavering commitment to bring attention to these subjects and voice his feelings within his work have allowed him to resonate with audiences for over 30 years and counting. In this essay, I will be discussing why Spike Lee utilises documentary and archival footage within his narrative films. Specifically, I'll be focusing on Black Klansman and how the incorporation of footage from the Charlottesville riots will help the film come full circle and wake the audience up to the fact that racism in America is still unfortunately live and well today. Wake up! Wake up, wake up, wake up! Up you wake, up you wake, up you wake, up you wake! Spike has literally been telling us as an audience to wake up for decades. But it's his use of archival footage and imagery in his films that takes his command and slaps you in the face with it until you have no choice but to wake up and smell the coffee. Footage of Osama Bin Laden during 25th hour's infamous fuck you monologue, right off the back of the 9-11 terror attacks in New York. The blackface montage from Bamboozled, which contextualises how degrading and disrespectful popular culture has treated people of colour throughout history. The chilling injection of Rodney King's murder by the hand of the LAPD laced into the opening of Malcolm X as the American flag burns. Spike is no stranger with drawing direct links to our own reality, and one of his most powerful examples of this provocative storytelling technique can be found in Black Klansman starring John David Washington and Adam Driver. Based on a true story, Black Klansman is set within 1970s America and follows Ron Stallworth, the first African-American police officer for the Colorado Springs Police Department, as he infiltrates the white supremacist hate organization of the Ku Klux Klan. It's a polarizing look at how racism infects the very structure of our own society, through corrupt police officers, politicians and organisations. And Spike uses this theme to hold a haunting mirror up to the Donald Trump administration that currently resides within the White House. However, it's not until the end of Black Klansman that the modern day reality of America's racial ignorance is fully highlighted. Lee decides to end the film on a more sombre and eye-opening note, showcasing a carefully cut together presentation of the Charlottesville riots which took place four decades after the events of Black Klansmen. Self-identified neo-Nazis and Klansmen paraded the streets of Charlottesville to protest the removal of Confederate monuments throughout America. This in turn received backlash and resulted in violent altercations with counter-protesters. Amongst the casualties, 32-year-old Heather Hayer was killed during the riots and we are made to witness that attack that took her life. This assembly of hate and violence within the edit, intertwined with footage of the real former Grand Wizard David Duke's presence at the rally, still preaching to believers and fueling a message of hate during those infamous two days in Charlottesville, and President Donald Trump's lackadaisical denouncement of the white supremacist groups involved, proves to be the perfect visual parallel that Spike Lee could use to connect the dots between the America of yesterday and the America of today. Things may have changed, but really they're still the same. Barry Alexander Brown, a longtime Spike Lee collaborator and editor of Black Klansman, explains that Spike doesn't draw these clear lines in his head about, oh, this is 73, but this is happening now. It's more of an intellectual connection. For him, it's emotional and therefore visual. Lee's priority is a story and how that story can get its message across effectively and hit his audience the hardest. Storytelling is storytelling. In my mind, 
I don't think I've broken the rule of cinema if I include documentary footage in my narrative films. Spike Lee's masterful injection of documentary footage helps ground his narrative films into reality, reminding audiences that what they are watching is not just a fantasy piece, but real issues that we still face today. The ending of Black Klansman hits a nerve because the world we live in today directly parallels ugly characteristics from the past that we see in the film. And even more worrying is how these same racist ideologies show signs of living within our political system, even within the White House itself. To close this, I will leave you with a quote from Martin Scorsese. The picture takes you to a safe place. We're watching a movie, it's up on a screen. And then suddenly we're catapulted into now. Because it's not only real, what you're seeing up there on the screen, it's happening, and it's sanctioned by the government. It transcends the medium, what he did there in the last 10 minutes. It's cinema, and it's beautiful. Thank you for listening to this essay on Spike Lee. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to post your thoughts below in the comments, and if you did enjoy the video, remember to click that like button. If you'd like to see more content from me in the future, please subscribe to this channel. You can also follow me on Twitter via the link in the description below.